Hello everyone, welcome to 5 Games 5 Minutes from aconelectron.co.uk Pandemonium This is a horrible little platformer. I don't say horrible because it's ugly or badly programmed. Quite the reverse. It looks lush and it hails from Peter Scott, the genius behind many an Acon Electron super game. The aim of Pandemonium is to explore a huge area, teeming with bouncing aliens, wandering from room to room freestyle. You'll find the aliens can be killed with a blast from your gun. Once hit, they stay dead too, and they're not reincarnated every time you leave the room and come back in again. Let's at least be thankful for that! You're looking for pieces of the core, and after some exploration, you'll also find telephone boxes, into which you can input a number to be transported around the grid. The first few goes, you'll have to take a note of these numbers, then you can plan your strategy for future tries. I say this game is horrible, because it's just far too wild west for most players. Solid aliens, and far too many solid moving platforms, all ricocheting off each other with bouncing baddies in between, are designed to cause the player maximum frustration. And they do. In Hercules, you live for such a brief period of time that you can actually see, in this video, the real-time length of two full games. What does this say about Gary Tomlinson's one and only Electron game? Answer, it's crap. It's crap in a sort of surreal way. There are no levels, for example. You're just randomly plonked on one of 12 screens. On many screens, there's no platforms, just empty spaces into which you can take a leap of faith and hope a platform appears. The graphics are pathetic. The sound is non-existent. The controls are sluggish. Jumping sometimes works and sometimes doesn't. Th there's some babbling on the inlay card about completing the 12 tasks of a modern-day Hercules. The only thing Herculean about this game is the Herculean size of the balls of the person who ran the powerhouse. To inflict something this bad upon the world as a professional release takes balls. Fortunately, to throw it on the scrap heap takes only a few seconds. Corporate Climber is a fairly likeable one-screen platform game from Dynabyte Software. In it, you proceed from the bottom left-hand corner of the screen to the executive washroom in the top right. It's meant to be an analogy of the world of business, with the key to the executive washroom symbolising your ascent from T-boy to tycoon. Each level of the platform that you need to cross is a bit like crossing the road, whilst on roller skates. As soon as you start moving, you can't stop, so you need to either wait for every lane to be clear before you set off, or try and hop quickly left and right to avoid collision. You seem to be stuck in the drawer of a filing cabinet too, that must just be there for comic effect. There's nothing much to this game really, it's mildly amusing, mildly entertaining, mildly tedious and yet colourful and well it's just so early 1980s isn't it? Each time you make it you get to take a well earned dump before starting again. I managed to climb to level 3 and I challenge anyone else to get any further. Starport is a highly polished arcade puzzle game from Superior Acon Stoff, set on yet another space station that's out of control and teeming with nasties. It's got its own unique selling point which is that it doesn't just have the traditional key card to collect and door to open with it type of puzzle. It also has some doors which only open when revolving wheels are placed in order. You roam around the starport zapping the aliens with your laser. Not that it does a lot of good mind you, because they're instantly reincarnated every time you exit then re-enter a room. You'll quickly find a key card labelled 1 and the door which it opens. You'll also quickly find that there are two, yes two, energy levels. First and only time I've ever seen that feature and Boy, does it ramp up the difficulty. An energy level and limited ammo I can just about monitor. Limited oxygen chews a step too far. As indeed are the incredibly short time spans you're given to complete the revolving wheel puzzles. Five seconds? My brain doesn't function that quickly, sorry. Spanking looking game, but so difficult as to border on the ridiculous. Squeakalizer tries to be a bit of a Tom and Jerry style caper. You're placed in the role of a quick-witted mouse up against several moggies in an overhead maze. The mouse character is bigger than the cat's. That's immediately a bit odd to look at. That aside, the game's a two-stage process on each level. Firstly, you need to collect four keys scattered around the maze. This opens up the big door in the middle of the screen. Inside this, you find either a giant mouse trap, that's actually a cat trap, or a box full of dynamite. I think the author probably liked the animation of Tom and Jerry, because when you get collared by a cat, or when you die, the animation effects are very good. Also, passing sticks of dynamite back and forth so whoever's left holding them meets their maker is also very cartoony. 
Unfortunately, whether you can get to see the cats being garroted or exploded very much depends on whether or not you can navigate around them to collect the keys. In some games you simply can't do it, and colliding with them results in an annoying death-restart-death loop. This spoils a game which otherwise could have been much better.